When the dinosaurs died out over 65 million years ago, we lost an incredible group of animals. No more long-necked sauropods, and no more giant feathery tyrannosaurs. All we have left of these giant beings is the traces they left behind. From fossilized bones to forgotten eggshells, it can be difficult to determine what behavior they exhibited when they were still alive. This leaves paleontologists with a lot of questions. How did they interact with each other? Were they able to socialize into herds? But most importantly, how did they do it? Today, I thought it might be fun to dive into the speculative world of just how dinosaurs may have coupled up. So strap yourselves in, because this is going to get interesting. When you look at dinosaur anatomy, the first question that may come to mind is, how? I mean, just look at some of these. The body plans of some dinosaurs can make just about anyone perplexed as to how it could have worked. Maybe a good place to start off at would be looking at possible anatomy. Yes, I am about to speculate on dinosaur genitals, so be prepared. All the people watching this video most likely have some set of genitals on them. Mammals are an interesting class of animals, especially humans. The male reproductive system is outside the body, but can primarily be found within the abdomen of other animals. They keep it inside their body until it's needed. Speaking of mammal penis, most mammals today have a bone known as a baculum. This bone is basically how they can guarantee an instant stiffy, so they're ready to go at a moment's notice. Humans are one of the rare exceptions of mammals who are boneless and rely on blood pressure to get it up. Most other primates have this bone, so it's interesting to note. And then we have reptile genitals. Snakes and lizards have not just one, but two heads. It's possible that being able to mate from either side of the female might be useful in competitive mating scenarios. Just take a look at these snakes in a mating aggregation. It's likely that there is just a single female hiding in that ball. So having two penises can help with this competition. Not only that, the ladies are also doubling up as well. So, yeah, the more you know. Some reptiles have tiny spikes or hooks on their doubled phallus. This is quite the ornamentation. And what about one of the living archosaurs, alligators? Well, they are permanently erect but it is tucked inside their body until it's time for action. And unlike mammals, they have an all-in-one hole that's used for both mating and going to the bathroom. This is called a cloaca. Speaking of single holes, let's take a quick look at birds. They also have this single opening for all purposes. Fun fact? Over 95% of birds don't have any kind of penis. They'll do something charmingly known as a cloacal kiss, where the male mounts the female as she moves her tail off to the side. They touch butts, and that's how the female's egg becomes fertilized. What I love most about this chart is that Cloac mal sounds like a really creative insult to use on someone you don't like. There are a couple of birds that kept their penis, like ducks. They have this intimidating corkscrew shape to them, and female ducks have a matching corkscrew vagina. In fact, a lot of male ducks grow a new penis every year. Yep, so there's that tidbit of knowledge. 
While I'm sure you are all very fascinated with all of these anatomy lessons, you're probably wondering what all this has to do with dinosaurs. Regrettably, we have no fossilized evidence of dinosaur genitals, so all we can do at this time is speculate. We can try looking at today's animals to fantasize what mating dinosaurs could have looked like. Since the closest living relatives to dinosaurs are archosaurs, we can try looking to crocodilians and birds for answers. So, since we have no fossil evidence of a penis bone, we can go ahead and rule that one out for the time being. We can make several inferences about the reproductive equipment of dinosaurs based on some of the modern relatives we've reviewed. So, what would a T-Rex look like having sex? Professor John Long, I kept wanting to call him Long John, wrote an insightful book titled The Dawn of the Deed. He describes it as possibly being a delicate business, that would have had to involve balancing a vast amount of weight on the mate's back. Large, flightless birds such as ostriches and emus did not lose their penis during evolution. So maybe it's possible these giant theropods had one as well. John had estimated that a T-Rex measuring at 12 meters, that's about 39 feet, would have needed a package of nearly two meters long in order to mate effectively. That's about the same size of a blue whale's bits. This would likely need to be stored within the T-Rex's cloaca, remaining coiled up until it was needed. Can you imagine if it was the corkscrew shape like a duck's? It would truly be a terrifying sight. Just picture all the colors, spikes, and barbs it could have possessed, possibly even being used as a mating display to entice other lovebirds. But knowing how diverse the animal kingdom is, it's fully in the realm of possibility that many were like modern birds and practiced a dance to achieve the cloacal kiss. Yes, dinosaurs going ass to ass. What a sight. It's possible that smaller dinosaurs looked like ferocious chickens when copulating. The male would balance on the female's back and they smush their butts together. At this time, it's of course impossible to determine which species had which parts. We honestly won't know until a fossil is found with soft tissue, like two dinosaurs that are caught in the act. Gender and sex rarely fit into neat, squeaky clean boxes. A simple binary of penis or no penis fails to account for the range and diversity of the many animals alive today. So I'm sure there was a fantastic amount of variety in the dinosaurs. A final point I'd like to bring up today would be the positions of certain dinosaurs. While it's easy to picture turkey-sized dinosaurs, what about massive sauropods? You might get some entertainment from Brian Ford's interesting theories. He is infamous in the paleo community with published books such as Too Big to Walk. Here, he suggests that dinosaurs would have either had to have been semi or fully aquatic, where water's buoyancy would have lessened their weight. And yes, he had actually proposed the very memeable sex lakes. This theory was that there would have had to have been numerous Mesozoic hot tubs that were just the right depth for sauropods to mate in. Now, of course, this isn't exactly a widely accepted explanation, and it generally gets written off. After all, simple things like walking requires a shift in weight as the dinosaur balances, so its skeleton had to be strong enough to handle these shifts. 
If dinosaurs were strong enough to walk, they were strong enough to mate. But then of course we have the spiky, plated dinosaurs. How did they make contact without getting hurt? Paleontologist Heinrich Mallison put the work into figuring out possible positions, primarily focusing on a type of stegosaur known as Kentrosaurus. He got to work on making computer models to try simulating the act with some possible positions. And the results were a uh, castration. So they must have had another method for mating. It's possible they would have needed a long, flexible instrument so that they could safely reach the female's cloaca. Maybe if it was long enough, they could even simply stand next to each other, ensuring a safe, pain-free experience. All right, maybe some of you are wondering, why do we care so much? Why bother speculating on extinct private parts? Well, it just comes down to our nature. We're curious. How fascinating must it have been to not only witness a massive dinosaur, but how they wooed each other, how they coupled up, and wondering how they nested or cared for their young. It's just something that, until we find fossil evidence, we can only imagine. Well guys, this video was a lot of fun to do, but I gotta say my search history looks incredibly atrocious right now. So maybe to help redeem me of some of my embarrassment, consider giving this video a like if you learned anything new. I'd love to hear what you all think about some of these theories, so feel free to comment down below. Thank you all so much again for watching this, and I'll see you guys next time.